Hello, I'm Bob Denton and welcome to another conversation. You know, Americans increasingly are calling themselves unaffiliated with any religion or rejecting it altogether. The steep rise in the number of Americans who don't profess any spiritual belief has been one of the biggest shifts in American culture and politics in the past 20 years. We're joining me in a conversation on the decline of faith and religion in America is Dr. Jeffrey Pollack, Assistant Professor of Religious Studies at Radford University. And thanks so much for joining the conversation. Sure, thanks for having me, I appreciate it. Well, you know, before we get to talking about the trends and maybe some of the signs of what is said a decline of faith, perhaps we should provide a little bit more context and about some of the ambiguity perhaps of some definitional things. You know, when I, I was raised, what we were called Evangelical Southern Baptist, part of the Southern Baptist Convention. I went to Wake Forest when it was a, a Baptist um, institution for two degrees. Um, but as I hear people perhaps using the word evangelical, remembering back, I'm not sure that it was the same meaning of evangelical, and that's even kind of confusing. Sure, so the label evangelical or evangelical has a long history in the United States thinking about what kind of Christianity it's labeling. Uh, but when we get to this topic of uh, what we're calling the decline of religiosity or faith, uh, it's really a shifting in how those labels are understood and used in the, the U.S. public. Uh, so one of the, the, the biggest trends in terms of thinking about the religious identity of the United States is the fastest growing religious demographic group are called the religiously unaffiliated uh, or those who have no religion uh, oftentimes are referred to with the shorthand the nuns n-o-n-e-s on a survey when you're asked to check the box what religion are you they check the box none or they say they have no religion uh, and so this gets into the question of uh, who are the religious people of the United States and how do they self-understand? How do they label themselves and how do they understand others among all the groups that they could choose from? Uh, so that shift, that, that idea of evangelical as an ambiguous label uh, kind of points to this bigger recent trend in the shifting of religious affiliation in the United States. Well, you know, when I was looking at some of the statistics and I wondered like, well, when I, if I got a survey, I have been in my life a um, member of three different denominations, a fourth um, never joined, but that's the regular. And so I wouldn't know what, what denomination would I put that I am. Well, so this self-reporting is sure. what Self-reporting is one of the ways we, we measure religious identity. So when we think about religiosity or religious identity, this can be a moving target or kind of this interior dimension of someone's life. How do you measure it or quantify it? Uh, and so we can talk about two big measures demographically or in social science. We can talk about affiliation or the label I choose to belong to. These labels you were talking about, am I Southern Baptist, am I evangelical? Am I Roman Catholic? Am I Buddhist or Muslim? Right? Affiliation. Uh, but we could also talk about the religious behaviors that you do. Adherence. How often do you attend a religious meeting? How often do you engage in a religious or spiritual practice like prayer or for Christians, Bible reading? Uh, so affiliation and adherence are these two ways we can measure. And then we can sort of fine tune those identity measures by thinking about beliefs. Right? Do you believe in God or not? If you believe in God, what does that mean? Uh, do you believe in God as described in the Christian Bible or some other sort of a higher power? Uh, so when we're trying to measure religiosity, <coughs> affiliation and adherence are the two big measures, the labels that we choose to say we belong to and the behaviors we engage in. And then the beliefs that we hold and shift through time uh, can also help us understand religious affiliation. Well, you know, let's take a look at the landscape a little bit. Um, Overall, 26% of Americans consider unaffiliated. 28% say they're atheists or agnostics. Has that number kind of changed over time? Sure, so when we're looking at how do we quantify the, the size of relative groups, uh, there are a number of data sets that differ in how they do this. Uh, the Pew Research Center has a big data set. PRRI, or the Public Religion Research Institute, has a big data set. But the longest running data set we could use for measuring demographics is called the General Social Survey, or the GSS. Uh, that's a data set that's been gathered by social scientists at the University of Chicago almost every other year back to 1972. And so we have a pretty long runway for thinking about 
religiosity. And so when it comes to measuring the religiously unaffiliated, people who say they have no religion, uh, in 1972, that number was about 5% of the US population. Uh, and we come to today, and that number is pushing into 30%. Right, so depending on which one of those data sets you look at, they'll estimate somewhere between 25 and 36% of US adults say they have no religion. So the shorthand figure, around 30% of Americans say they have no religion. But then we need to get under the hood of that term a little bit, right? So to be religiously unaffiliated can mean lots of different things. Uh, so the Pew Research Center has helpfully broken that 30% down into three subcategories. Uh, so the two smallest groups of, of that are the atheists and the agnostics, people who say they know for certain that no God exists, or people who say that they're unsure and cannot answer whether or not God exists. Uh, those are to each about 5% of the US population. Uh, by far the biggest share of the religious unaffiliated group are what we call nothing in particulars. So the nothing in particular category, that's about 60% of that 30% number. So 60% of religiously unaffiliated people say uh, they're nothing in particular. So, the increase of unaffiliation doesn't mean an increase in atheism, right? It's a complex label. I thought it was interesting one of the data points was about uh, the role of religion in our lives and 53% now say religion is important in their beliefs, but that's down from 73% in 2013. And so that's another interesting, like how important is the role of religion in my life? Right, so once you put a label on yourself as being religious or not, then you have to think about how important is that label among all of the social identity categories, a political affiliation, a racial or gender identity, a religious affiliation. Uh, so how much relative importance do you assign to the religion component of that identity label? And we do see a decreasing reporting in the relative level of importance for that religion label. Mm. And also attendance. Um, a fairly recent Gallup poll showed 30% attend religious services weekly or nearly weekly. And I guess the uh, denomination that has the largest decline, I guess, is, is uh, among Catholics, according to surveys. Sure. So when we're talking about changes in behaviors and changes in labels, uh, we, we, we talk about the demographic phenomenon of religious switching. I used to ascribe this label to myself and now I assign a different label to myself. And we see a lot of switching out of some groups into the unaffiliated group. And so the highest level of religious change, we see out movement away from Catholicism and away from mainline or centrist progressive Protestantism. Uh, so groups like the American Baptist and the Methodist and the Presbyterian Church in the USA uh, and the Disciples of Christ, these mainline kind of moderate Protestant groups and white Catholic groups are seeing the biggest share shift out of those labels into having no religion. You know, the thing that, um, my, my personal opinion, um, is about age related to, correlated to declining of faith. It's a generational trend. 34% of Gen Z claim no religion, 29% millennials, 25% Gen X, 18% of baby boomers, and of course those who are left of the silent generation, only 9%. But there does seem to be a generational change in that regard. There absolutely is. There's a very clear pattern in terms of age cohort. So the younger a person is, the far likelier they are to have no religious affiliation. And so as we think about uh, what might the future changes look like in terms of the US religious landscape, of course we can never predict for, cert with, for certainty, but there are more Americans living today who say that they have no religious affiliation than ever before. Uh, so PRRI, they released uh, about a year ago now a new, a new data set on the religiously unaffiliated. And one of the most interesting observations they found uh, for the first time, 10% of Americans say they grew up in a household with no religious affiliation. Mm -hmm. uh, so as you think about what does the label of being religious mean in terms of the broader U.S. society, there are more people who feel more comfortable being at a distance from religion than ever before in the nation. So as we think about that question about the relative importance of being religious, 
Uh, there are more Americans for whom it is normal to have no religious connection. Well, uh, the other thing that has struck me over the years is distinction between religious and spiritual. And 47% say I'm religious, 33% say spiritual but not religious. How do, what does, what's the difference between those? How do you define those differences? This is another kind of complex set of questions. <coughs> if, if a religious label is becoming less common, are there other labels that used to be less important that are maybe replacing them? And so the label of being spiritual, you use the phrase spiritual but not religious, right? That's a phrase scholars have used to try to describe this newly important, ambiguously, fuzzily defined category of the nothing in particular, right? So the spiritual but not religious. Spiritual sometimes seems to have a more open-ended connotation to it than religion, right? Religion oftentimes implies institutions with authority structures and hierarchies and demands that are placed on individual behaviors and expectations for collective identity, whereas spiritual feels more individual, open-ended and free-flowing, uh, whatever connection an individual finds themselves drawn to. Uh, What's interesting, we find though, among the religiously unaffiliated, spiritual, it's an important label, but it's not among the kind of top level uh, of these labels people at attach themselves. So as we think about, about to, so affiliation and adherence and belief, these three ways of measuring religiosity, on that belief point, 30% uh, of Americans say they have no religion, but almost 80% of Americans say they believe in God or some kind of higher power. And so this question about spirituality, those beliefs about a higher order of, of reality, a sort of transcendent or supernatural or divine aspect to existence, many Americans, most Americans still hold to that perspective. And so spiritual might be one label that we could use to describe those perceptions. Well, you know, usually at least once on every show I get in trouble. And I'm about to get in trouble now, but I thought the stats were overwhelming when there's a difference, I don't know why we should be surprised, between responses of self-identified Democrats and self-identified Republicans. It's even political. 67% um, of liberals believe in God compared to 95% conservatives. 61% uh, Republicans say religion, that they are religious and 28% spiritual, Democrats at 37 and 41. And so it's kind of like, wow, I mean, even we have so many divisions, but even you can see lines of distinctions in terms of political affiliation. Absolutely, what well, we know in the US context, religion and politics have always been in a complex relationship to one another, right? We think about the separation of church and state as a sort of hallmark of the US national founding. Uh, but we know religion has always been influential in the political scene in the United States. Uh, and that's still the case today. But as we look at this new shift, this new emergence of the religiously unaffiliated, uh, and we see as part of that phenomenon, the declining reported importance of religion, politics is rising to the surface. We know we live in a politically polarized society. And oftentimes, uh, so a, a, an important political scientist who studies religion, Ryan Burge, he's recently theorized that uh, politics is now first in order of those identity labels ahead of religion. It used to be maybe in the 1990s when we think about culture war, or the religious right, that religion was first in dictating your politics. But now it's more maybe that the political label is ahead of the religious label and you find a religious label that falls in behind those political leanings. And so Republicans are far more likely to identify as some sort of Christian and the religiously unaffiliated are far likelier to report no religious affiliation. So we can see the, the, the religiously unaffiliated are participating in that dynamic interaction of religion and politics uh, where they're far likelier to be democratic, especially atheists and agnostics. They're far likelier to be Democrats or political liberals. Fascinating, very interesting. Well, what about Virginia? How are we in Virginia um, compared to nationally? Yeah. And then are there two Virginias like some of us talk about of the Northern Virginia and South Side and Southwest Virginia? What about Virginia? Well, when we think about how the Commonwealth, uh, its religious landscape is distributed, we have to think mainly about population distributions. Uh, 
when we're thinking about religious diversity, right, so the number of differing religious groups uh, that are together in a geographic location, uh, if you take a place, for example, like Roanoke City and compare it to a place like Montgomery County uh, and then to a place like Fairfax County, and we kind of have uh, maybe a spread of identities there, uh, Montgomery County shows a level of religiously unaffiliated that's equivalent to Fairfax County. We can think about the presence of Virginia Tech, right? A large number of people from lots of different backgrounds living together. Uh, Roanoke City is a little bit less religious diverse than Montgomery County and far less than Fairfax. And then Charlottesville, for example, uh, is far more diverse even than Montgomery County. Uh, if we look at Southwest Virginia, there's a little bit more homogeneity, right? So a little bit of uh, people who are, are, are more similar to one another, but, uh, but the Commonwealth has, has, has a range of, of different religious patterns, and they really map more onto the number of people, the kind of relative size of population in given pockets of, of the Commonwealth. Very interesting. Well, so from a 30,000 foot view, what are some of the reasons that we say some of the shifts? I mean, I guess as we don't trust institutions as much as we used to, maybe even technology, because I can use Zoom. I don't necessarily need to be in person, yeah. even though in the New Testament it kind of says, you know. I, 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 when I, two or three are gathered, is that yes, what you're you Yes, know, you need to, to, to gather together and worship in the house of God. Um, and so what, from your perspective, is some of the things that enhance some of the changes? Yeah, seeing? social scientists have been really curious about trying to measure the reasons why. Why is religious affiliation declining? And the number one reason uh, that PRRI finds is that people have simply stopped believing uh, in religious beliefs, right? So the, especially the kind of strict sets of doctrines that religious institutions demand. So the very particular interpretations. Well, do you believe in God or not? If you believe in God, then is that a Trinitarian interpretation? The sort of complex and subtle details of belief people have just stopped to believe them. Uh, and so we might, we might explain that by thinking about just the increasing level of education and increasing re reliance of putting importance on science. There are other explanations for the world than religious beliefs that seem more plausible. Uh, so a declining belief generally, uh, if you don't believe strongly in a set of principles, why are you going to give your time and money to an institution dedicated to them? Uh, also, you bring up the, the issue of technology and social connectedness, right? We know that social media uh, and mobile digital devices uh, are leading to increasing individualism and atomization, right? We, we kind of are isolated from others socially in general, uh, and religions have often expressed themselves through uh, gathering together in congregations for regular group meeting. And so, uh, the less likely people are to engage in those behaviors, uh, the less powerful their attachments will be to the institutions that demand those behaviors. Uh, we can also think about increasing diversity. There are more religious options present in the US social landscape, uh, and there's a higher level of literacy about various different religious options. And so in the US religious landscape, there is a more competitive religious marketplace of varying different options. And so the level of intensity someone might feel to any given individual group uh, can receive more competition from other firms, other religious groups in the marketplace. Uh, so there's less intense attachment to specific religious groups. Well, and so let's talk a little bit about perhaps some of the consequences may not be as correlations per se, but would you say we're no longer what we used to growing up a Judeo-Christian society, that our government was based upon principles of Judeo-Christian society? That's probably um, uh, the language that is no longer current, I mean, or for consideration. Yeah, the question of the relationship between the the nation state of the United States and in religion, right? What, are, what is, is the United States a Christian nation or is the United States a religious nation? These are age old topics uh, that are kind of have been intensely debated since the national founding down to the present. And so this label you bring up, Judeo-Christian, right? That label came to prominence between the 1930s and the 1950s, right? As we think about that turn of the 20th century era of immigration the 19th century 
consensus of Protestantism faced all kinds of new religious groups, especially with Southern and Eastern European Catholics and Jews arriving in large numbers and changing the demographic landscape of the nation. And so as those new immigrants in the 1880s and 1890s and 1900s had children and solidified in neighborhoods and communities in the nation, Catholicism and Judaism became normalized in the population. And so by the time we get to the post-World War II era, a Protestant, Catholic, Jewish consensus characterized the sense of what it meant to be religious, right? In the 1950s, the sociologist Will Herberg uh, published his famous book, Protestant, Catholic, Jew. He called the religion of the American way of life as a tri-faith. Mm. Protestantism, Catholicism, and Judaism seemed to be the centrist normative position but we don't know what that label will look like now, right? And when, with religiously unaffiliated being the fastest growing religious group and the largest single religious group, we don't know what that's going to say about our society, but we do know that, that demographics lead to these bigger questions of self, self-labeling for the nation, right? How do we think of ourselves? And if we look back quickly at that political polarization topic we talked about, there's a lot of discussion now also about an increase in Christian nationalism, uh, a segment of the population who have a core political belief that the United States was founded as a Christian nation and should perpetuate Christianity. Uh, that's one competitor perception we can see kind of increasing in importance and intensity as religious affiliation is declining and shifting. Well, you know, and, and I understand there's a generational, and I'm of a, of a different generation. Um, but is there a link, not causation, but I can't help but to think that, that it impacts in terms of civic engagement or we're becoming a coarser, cruder culture. Um, one of not uh, of psychological egoism, where all interest is self-interest. And I don't know if there's a correlation or what have you, but religion tends to, from a public set, it's, it's not just you, um, and the sense of the community. And so I struggle with that a little bit myself, in all honesty, this concept that if we don't have the values that at least any religion foundation has, how that impacts perhaps our culture and our coarseness, rudeness. So the question of civic engagement and our ability to engage in civil discourse together, right, in a complex pluralistic society, how do we engage with one another across intense differences? Uh, religion is something that we have looked to as either a source of uh, general kind of ethical behavior or as a source of polarization, right? So religion does, has done those two things. And this question of how does unaffiliation or declining religious affiliation impact this, this issue, it's actually debated by social scientists. And so, so many social scientists, in, in, as they're measuring this group, will find that uh, the nothing in particular segment of the religiously unaffiliated are not very engaged civically. Uh, other social scientists find that that may not be true, that, that the, the religiously unaffiliated actually do engage in a high level of civic engagement. Uh, as we think about the three main subgroups inside of the religiously unaffiliated, nothing in particular is atheists and agnostics. The atheist and agnostic components, those two are some of the most highly mobilized and public, civically active segments in the, new, in the US population. Uh, so it's a little bit of a mixed bag uh, and we don't know yet, right? Religiously unaffiliated have only been this large share of the population in the last eight to 10 years. And so we're not sure yet, we haven't seen yet what the effects are going to be in our society on declining religious affiliation and civic engagement. But it does seem that uh, this increasing isolationist, isolationism and individualism, decreasing collectivity is going to have some sort of important impact on how we cohere as a society. Well, we literally only have about three minutes or so remaining, and I want to give that three minutes to you, summing up what's the future as we look at this transforming about religion and society in America. How would you summarize? Sure, well, so I, I, I am more of a historian <laughs> than a social scientist, so I, I can't tell the future. Uh, but if we do look at demographics and we think about this generational pattern you've noticed, which is one of the strongest patterns in the religiously unaffiliated, that the younger someone is, 
the less likely they are to attach to a religious label, I think we're going to find a really multifarious religious future. I think traditionally understood institutional religiosity is going to continue decreasing, but I think people are going to engage in a sort of cultural inventiveness of finding new ways to channel this human drive to want to explain existence. Right? Whether or not we engage in, in institutionally coordinated religion, humans are always looking to understand a world in which they live in, in a large scale term. And so I think we'll find other ways of, of individuals channeling that meaning-making drive. And so I think that, that the future is going to be uh, one of new ways of finding explanations for existence. Religiosity is going to shift in its institutional expressions, but also in the way it is perceived and understood. And so I think we'll see new labels that will begin to emerge for how people begin to think about their identities and how they engage with other people and how they understand the world that they live in. Wow. Well, believe it or not, our time is out. And um, this has been very fascinating, very informative. Uh, and I certainly appreciate you joining the conversation. Well, thanks so much for having me. And as always, I want to thank you for joining us and hope you do so again for the next conversation with Bob Denton.